Welcome. In this video, we are going to take a brief look at the discoveries of electrons and nuclei. In 1897, English physicist J.J. Thompson discovered the electron in experiments using cathode ray tubes. A cathode ray tube is a vacuum tube that contains an electron source and a screen. Thompson was able to measure the charge to mass ratio for both the electron and then later the proton. He found that for an electron, the charge to mass is minus 1.76 times 10 to the 11 coulombs per kilogram. He was able to find that the mass of a proton is 1836 times the mass of an electron. In 1909, American physicist Robert Millikan did his oil drop experiment. This experiment allowed him to measure the charge of the electron, and after improvements, he later found in 1913 that the charge of the electron is minus 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Knowing the charge of an electron and the charge to mass ratio allows us to find the mass of the electron and a similar calculation gives the mass of the proton. The mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, and the mass of a proton is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So Thomson and Millikan proved the existence of the electron, which makes up part of the atom. They also showed that the electron was a tiny part of the atom, and that the electrons are identical to each other, and that they all have the same charge and mass. This is also true for protons. In 1904, Thompson developed the plum pudding model of the atom. We can think of the atom as a bowl of pudding, so to speak, with positive charge represented by the pudding and the negative charges, the electrons, represented by the plums that are suspended in the pudding. In 1911, New Zealand physicist Ernest Rutherford and his students Hans Geiger and Ernest Marsden did an experiment to test Thomson's model. This experiment was called the gold foil experiment and in this experiment, Rutherford measured the scattering of alpha particles. These are helium nuclei, and you're going to measure the scattering by thin gold foil. A beam of alpha particles was aimed at the thin gold foil. Screens were placed all around the foil, and they showed that the alpha particles were scattered. Rutherford found that some went right through, and that, and that was expected. He also found that some were deflected at large angles, and that was pretty shocking. Rutherford's famous quote is the following. It was quite the most incredible event that has ever happened in my life. It was almost as incredible as if you fired a 15-inch shell at a piece of tissue paper, and it came back and hit you. Rutherford concluded that atoms are mostly empty space and that the nucleus is very small in size but contains the positive charge and most of the mass. This led Rutherford to propose a new model of the atom called the planetary model. The nucleus has a positive charge and a diameter of about 10 to the minus 15 meters. The electrons orbit the nucleus and the atom has a diameter of 10 to the minus 10 meters. There are problems with the planetary model, though. Orbiting electrons will have centripetal acceleration, and accelerating electrons will emit photons. This will cause a decrease in the radius of the electron, which will eventually cause the collapse of the atom. 
but we know atoms are stable, so we're going to need another model. I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.